So thank you uh, for your invitation. Thank you, Ellen, Joseph, and Joel, for uh, <coughs> taking care about the minority in Syria. Because uh, since the beginning of the Syrian uprising, it's very difficult to explain the sectarian character of the conflict. Yes. Of course, the sectarianism is not the only root of this conflict, but quickly, sectarianism became the major cleavage in Syria. You can see on this map as a superposition between the sectarian distribution of the population in Syria, uh, in yellow you have white, orange the Druze, in red the, the Christian, in green it's the, uh, the Sunni, and at the north uh, the Kurdish and Turkmen minority. You can see on this uh, on this map that the superposition of the different armed groups, Syrian army on the west, controlling uh, the territory where uh, the main mining is. The Kurds, of course, in the north are controlling uh, the Kurdish area, and Daesh, the uh, Islamic State, and other rebels, uh, who mostly you know, are uh, linked to uh, Al Qaeda, uh, are controlling the uh, Sunni area. And you can see that in uh, Daesh land and in uh, Nusra land, around the depth, uh, you are nearly no uh, minorities. Uh, in uh, in Idlib, you are just uh, an exception. This is Jebel uh, Sumar, uh, where you have Jews, and this is Fouad uh, Kefraya, uh, where you have Shia population. Fouad Kefraya are still loyal to the government of Syria and surrounded by the rebels. And the Jews of the Jebel Sumak were obliged to convert to Sunnism if they don't, didn't want to be killed. But as if they are uh, officially Sunni, but you know that the Druze are using very well the dissimulation, like here. Uh, 20 Druze were killed last year by uh, Al Nusra because they were accused to be Kafir. Does it mean uh, not to be a uh, Muslim? So, for the, uh, this simple map shows us the sectarianism character of the, the fight in, uh, in Syria. Um, what the root of the Syrian civil war is the demography. Uh, each 20 years since 1945, the population in Syria doubled each 20 years. Uh, but since uh, 1980, there is a huge difference between religious minorities and the Sunni majorities. Um, minorities were about 30% of the population in 1980. And now only 20. No, in 2010, it was only 20 percent. Uh, why? Because they have better human development. Um, the Christians, since a long time, come to the, the missionary school, have a better uh, knowledge and reduce their fertility. Instead, uh, the Sunni population from the Euphrates Valley, from Idlib, from the Hora, for instance, they still have about eight children per woman. Uh, Alawite, Jews, Christian, it's only two children per woman, so after one generation you can see the, the, the difference. And this is one of the roots of the, uh, the Syrian uprising. Sunni radicals, Muslim Brotherhood, Salafists were since the beginning very strong in the opposition. Today the rebellion is dominated by Al Nusra and uh, the Islamic State, but we call the Free Syrian Army, it's probably less than 1% of, uh, of the fighters. And they are not uh, secular or they are not fighting for the democracy uh, as uh, we, uh, we heard at the, at the beginning. And the both movements, Al Nusra and Daesh, of course, want to erase, to uh, expel to destroy uh, non-Sunni population from Middle East, as they, don't want, they want also to destroy all the secular Sunni uh, that uh, there is uh, in, uh, in the Middle East. That's why there are also many uh, Sunni who are supporting uh, the Damascus government because uh, they have no choice. Uh, I was in, in Syria two weeks ago, 
I meet a lot of people from Raqqa, uh, refugees uh, in, in Damascus, lawyer, for instance. They explain to me, as a lawyer, um, this man was a Sunni. Uh, as a lawyer, uh, he must uh, escape from Raqqa because uh, the Islamic State imposed the Sharia uh, justice, and all the lawyer who was working with the old uh, regime, with, with the state before, uh, are guilty and must be killed. So, um, as Sunni population, uh, also are victims about uh, Daesh and uh, al -Nusra. So, I'm going to, um, to draw um, a map, uh, a geography of the religious minority in, in Syria. I'm going to focus more on the Shia uh, minority, Alawi Druze, and because uh, my colleagues are going to speak about the Christian. And uh, in the second part of my presentation, I will speak about the issue of the minorities in the Syrian uh, crisis. We have to keep in mind, this is a, a repartition of the, the population at the end of the Ottoman Empire, uh, that there is a clear link between um, religion and power in Middle East. Um, during the Ottoman Empire, the master was of course, the Sunni population, the Sunni, the Sunni as Arab or Turkish population, but the Sunni. And the minorities, uh, minorities, the heterodox minorities, like the Druze, like the Alawite, like the Maronites, was pushed in the badland, in the mountain, or in the, the border of the Mamura, the border of the uh, fertile land. That's why we have the minorities uh, in the Jebel Ansari, in the Mount Lebanon, and <coughs> in the Druze Jebel, for instance, here at the border of the uh, Bedouin uh, territory. And this repartition of the population uh, is uh, still, um, still the same uh, today. In, in my atlas, I tried to, to explain uh, this uh, repartition uh, uh, by, by um, System, uh, um, what's it called? The system. Why the Sunni are in the city? Why the Sunni are in the, the best land? Because it's the community of the power. So the power gives them the better place. And why the Shia and the Maronites are uh, outside? Because as heterodox community, as community far from the power, they are just the poorest part of the territory. Um, it's the concept of refuge mountain, uh, where also the, the, the community uh, are living because they are protected by, by the mountain from, from the, um, uh, the Ottoman army. And the, the mountain is so poor that there is no point for the Pasha, there is no point for the authority to send the army in the mountain because it's so poor that there is no money. So, uh, the mountain is a natural protection, and the poverty also it's a it's a economic protection uh, from the uh, free Ottoman uh, authorities. And between between the best land uh, between Aleppo and Damascus and the Bedouin area, you have a very dangerous area here because you are just in front of the, the Bedouin and the Ottoman uh, authority. Send, uh, let the Alawite or the Ismailian to live in this, uh, in this area because they were a protection uh, against the Bedou for, for, the main, uh, for the main city. And this repartition of the population is still the same today. Okay, you have a rural exodus and a lot of people, of course, move to the city, but we, when we come back at the actual repartition of the population in, in Syria, you can see that after one century, uh, it's quite the same uh, distribution. This is <coughs> the uh, view of the Alawite uh, mountain close to Kardaha, very uh, poor area. Um, in this village, uh, the only uh, agriculture um, where it's possible to do is uh, tobacco and, uh, and wheat, hard wheat and a uh, very, very poor area. This is a traditional, um, traditional uh, house uh, in the Alawite uh, villages. No, it's different, but uh, until 40 years ago, it was uh, like this. 
And when you, you are in the Alawite mountain, when you speak with the people, you understand why the Alawite are supporting uh, Assad uh, regime. Because as many people say to me, they are living now in Damascus, in Tartus, in Latakia, they are civil servants, they don't earn too much money. But in comparison to this situation, uh, who is in the memory of the Alawite uh, people, they said to me that we don't want to come back to the mountain. Uh, that's why we are fighting. Because we want to, to stay in Tartus, we want to stay in the city, we want to, to keep uh, our uh, level of, uh, of life. <coughs> the French uh, mandate and the British mandate when uh, they came in uh, Syria, Lebanon, Palestine and Jordan used, of course, this uh, sectarian uh, division and France created an uh, Alawite state uh, on, on the coast where the Alawite were the majority of the population. Lebanon also was created by France with a majority of Christians. Lebanon was created as a refuge for the, the Christian of the, of the Middle East. Um, in 1936, the Alawite, the Druze state, uh, and uh, the state of Syria were unified because um, the Alawite and the Druze probably was not so uh, enthusiast about uh, uh, ethnic state. Uh, Jacques Velers, the famous uh, geographer uh, who wrote Le, Le Pays des Alawites, explained that uh, in his book that the, 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 the Alawites are not, uh, are, not, are not a nation, uh, are not ready to be, uh, to be a nation, and that's why the Alawite state uh, collapsed. Um, no, I don't know what will be the future uh, exactly in Syria, but uh, since two years, when I speak with my, uh, my friend in, uh, in Latakia, on Tartus, uh, they say to me that if Assad stay at the power, okay, they, they, can, they can stay in Syria, but if the regime collapse, if the regime fall, it's better to have uh, an Alawite state. So the idea of Alawite state, protection for the Alawite, is, uh, is coming back. And um, I think that it could be possible because if we want to have a, a new state, we need um, a willing from the population, and there is a strong willing in the Alawite population for a uh, uh, protected area. And you need also protection from outside. And uh, you know that uh, the Russians uh, are uh, well uh, located now in Tartus, where they are using the port, and they are also in the uh, Latakia airport, which is uh, the main uh, airplane base uh, for Russia outside Russia. And with Russian Iranian support, this state could uh, exist uh, in, in the future, <coughs> but only if the, the regime falls, because uh, in the other case, uh, of course, uh, they, they, they don't want to have any, uh, any uh, autonomy or any independence. It's not uh, like uh, the, the Kurds. Um, This is the repartition in 2010, uh, the population uh, in Syria. Alawite was about 10%, and you see the clear majority of the population uh, is, uh, is Sunni, 64, Arab Sunni, 64%. Um, and with the demographic trend that we have in Syria, uh, what, what we had, because of course with the war, it's, uh, it's different now, uh, after, uh, in 2020, the Alawite should be only 7%, the Christian 3-4%, uh, that is, it means a reduced minority, only 15% of the, of the population. Um, it's a problem for the regime because the regime uh, is um, using, since Hafez uh, al-Assad, the Alawite in the army, in the intelligence service, uh, as a civil servant. Uh, about 90% of the Alawite are working for the state um, in the army or in the, the, the industry, the administration. And the Alawite are the real backbone of the, of the regime. Um, <coughs> it's classical exchange of clientelisms. The Alawite are not supporting 
uh, Assad because he is Alawite, but they are supporting Assad because Assad family give them uh, many uh, advantage, many uh, privilege. And of course, this privilege um, were, uh, are not, <coughs> was, uh, were not very accepted uh, by the Sunni majority uh, when the, the, the country started to have economic problems. If the country is, the economy is well, okay, uh, the Sunni can accept uh, the, the privilege of the, of the Alawite, uh, but uh, when uh, you don't find job for your children, it's quite different. In 2011, at the beginning of the uprising, I, I was in, in Banyas. Uh, you know where it's Banyas, so it's a small city uh, on the coast, where half of the city is, uh, is Sunni, and behind Banyas, you have also many uh, Sunni villages uh, surrounded by Alawite uh, villages. Um, <coughs> this is uh, a map of Banyas. The city is clearly divided in two. At the north, you have the Alawite city. At the south, you have the Sunni city. And in Banyas, what the people say, the, the people who are protested against uh, Assad, we want 2,000 2, jobs in the uh, oil factory and in the uh, um, uh, some, uh, electric uh, power plant uh, for our community, because they accuse the Alawite to monopolize the jobs in the city. And I have did my PhD on this area, and I know that it's true. 90% uh, of, the, of the jobs of the worker of the both public industry in the city was, uh, was Alawite. And also the other uh, revendication of the uh, Sunni uh, protester, it was we don't want any more mixed school. We want separate school for girl and for boy. Because uh, in the Alawite uh, area, as in the Alawite community, there is no sex segregation like in the, in the Sunni. And uh, boy and girl are going to school uh, together. It's no uh, it's a problem. Um, <clears throat> so you have, in the, since the beginning, in the, in the protestation, uh, the both arguments, economic argument against the Alawite, and also uh, <laughs> religious argument uh, against a power dominated by a secular minority, because when you live in the Alawite area, uh, it's not so different from, from, from New York. People are very secular, they don't respect uh, Ramadan, uh, they don't go to, to mass to prize, the women don't have any uh, hijab, and uh, <coughs> you, feel, uh, you feel more free than in uh, Hama uh, or uh, in the Sunni area of uh, Damascus, of course. Um, so it was in, uh, in Banyas, and uh, <coughs> a few times after, you, if you remember, we heard uh, a slogan in, in Homs, the Alawite the Grave and Christian in Beirut. Um, this slogan uh, was uh, controversial. When you, you read at this time, the, media mainstream, uh, people say, in fact, actually, it was not uh, a real, it was, um, it was Muhabarat, um, it was uh, people from the intelligence service infiltrated in the demonstration who say uh, the Alawite, the Red, and the Christian in Beirut, because of course, the opposition, the protester, was democratic and secular. Uh, it was not possible uh, for the Syrian revolution to, uh, to have this slogan. Alors, is, it was, is it, it was a uh, manipulation of the regime or it was a slippage of a part of the opposition? For me, it was not a slippage of the opposition. It was, it was not, an, it was not uh, the, 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 the Syrian Muhabarat who, who said this. Uh, and it was not a slippage of the opposition, it was a reality. Because the sectarian problem in Syria don't start in 2011. It starts, of course, uh, many, many years before. Uh, the sectarianism is a part of the Syrian uh, society. 
you can live in peaceful uh, with sectarianism, but when there is uh, economic crisis, when there is tension, when there is also uh, support from abroad, the sectarianism can be a very bloody, uh, bloody thing. And uh, we have to remember that in March 2011, uh, if you watch uh, sometime uh, Al Jazeera, <laughs> you know that each, uh, each Friday you have uh, the, I don't know if it's the same, but uh, the Al Shah Al Qaradawi, which is, who is a uh, Muslim brotherhood, uh, refugee in, in Qatar since, uh, since about 30 years. And each Friday he has a, a show, the uh, Sharia Wal Hayat, the Sharia and the uh, Islamic law and, and the life. And he said clearly on the television uh, today the trend of the Arab uh, revolution uh, arrived to the next station. This station is Syria, and Syria cannot stay outside the Arab story. It was a clear declaration of war on the Syrian uh, of, of Bashar al-Assad by the military brotherhood and a clear declaration of war from Qatar to Syria. And since the beginning, you had weapon, money, coming from outside in Syria. <clears throat> you had problem in Syria. Socio-economic problem, uh, so a lot of socio-economic problem, it was clear. But without a strong push from abroad, I don't think that uh, we will be in, uh, in, such, uh, in such a situation uh, today. <clears throat> the other point, it's very clear, I have everything to lose from a change of regime in, uh, in Syria. The major opposition demonstrations have not mobilized the Alawite street. You have some op opposant uh, in the, uh, the Alawite community. Uh, Arif Dalila, for instance, it's an academic jailed for 10 years uh, because he was very criticized against the regime. Um, in the 1980s, you have some Marxist group uh, ruled, for instance, by uh, Riyad Turk, Communist, uh, Party of Communist Action, uh, recruiting a uh, lot in the Arab uh, population. But in 2011, the situation was very different. There is no more Marxist opposition in Syria. All the Marxists that you have are very old people, like George Sabra, uh, nearly 70 years old. And in the youth, um, you don't find any more uh, Marxist uh, opposition. Um, so I have to go far. Um, <coughs> the, the conflict, um, so I said that the, the Alawites have everything to lose from the change of regime in, uh, in Damascus, uh, because who will reach the power? The, the Islamist, the Sunni uh, majority, and uh, it's sure that all the Alawites uh, who are in the army or who are in good place in the administration uh, should be removed by, by, the, new, uh, by the new regime. Um, and moreover, the Alawite population is afraid about vengeance uh, from, uh, from the Muslim Brotherhood uh, after the Hama uh, massacre in, uh, in 1993. Uh, and after five years of very bloody uh, war, um, they have no illusion about uh, uh, national reconciliation of something, uh, something like this. Uh, few uh, Alawite massacres, like in Aramo in uh, August uh, 2013, show that uh, the Alawites will not uh, uh, wait any mercy from the, uh, the opposition. Um, <clears throat> so, um, what will happen uh, in the next, this year, the next two years? Uh, I, I just come back from, from Syria, and I saw that uh, in the, in the uh, governmental side, people are very, very confident. They think that they are going to win the war, um, with the Russian and the Iranian uh, support. Uh, I was in Damascus when the Syrian army uh, get back uh, Palmyra, and
and uh, it was a great, uh, great feasting in Damascus for, for this uh, victory. And now they are going to, to Deir ez -Zor because uh, Deir ez -Zor is surrounded by Daesh and they need to reopen the road to, to Deir ez -Zor to protect the, uh, the, the part of the city still under the, the government. And I think that uh, the Syrian army with the Russian support are going to, uh, to go to Raqqa uh, by the end of the year. Uh, it's a main uh, objective because uh, if, uh, if uh, the Syrian army and the Russian take Raqqa, it's justified the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Russian intervention in Syria and uh, it gives a new legitimacy to, uh, to Bashar al-Assad. That's why Raqqa is, I think, the main target uh, for, the, for this year. Uh, <coughs> the west, west of Syria, under the Syrian army control, is uh, very secure. Uh, you can travel by car between Latakia, Tartus, and Damascus. There is no, no problem. The, problem. the main problem is the car bomb, because uh, there is a lot of corruption in Syria, and it's very easy to cross the checkpoint with only 100 Syrian bombs, but does it mean 20 cents? Uh, and uh, I think that um, we will have uh, a lot of carbon uh, everywhere. Moreover, uh, because Daesh is, uh, is losing, Daesh is reducing uh, its territory and he will uh, use the, the terrorist weapon against, uh, against uh, the, the other groups. So, in, uh, in conclusion, the, the victory of the majority for the, the, will mean for, for the right and for, for, all, for all the minorities, the dictatorships of the majority, the re-Islamization re of the society and the Syrian institution, in which uh, they will not have their place, uh, and that's why uh, Alawites are supporting uh, the, the regime of Bashar al-Assad, and they are also followed by the other minorities. The future of uh, religious minorities is uh, related to, uh, to Assad uh, regime survival uh, in, uh, in Syria. Not necessarily uh, Bashar al-Assad uh, as personally, but his system uh, and the domination of the minority uh, on the political uh, system. Uh, and this, uh, this system uh, is himself related to Russian and Iranian support. Uh, Syria is a key place uh, for the both country. For Iran, it's a bridge between Iraq and Lebanon, uh, the Iranian axis. Some people ask about, say about uh, Shia axis. Um, and for Russia, it's the only military base in Mediterranean and Middle East and the only military base outside, outside Russia. Uh, Russia wants to stay on the Syrian coast, and uh, that's why uh, it's protecting the Alawite, um, because if the regime falls, uh, they understand very well that the Alawite will, do, uh, will ask for independence and become a kind of uh, Mediterranean Abkhazia. Um, and also, the Russians want to <coughs> to surround and to weak Turkey. And it's very clear that it's a, the dirtiest uh, process since uh, 300 years to go to the south and as the Bolshevik and Vladimir Putin uh, don't change this, uh, this goal. Uh, religious minorities are frightened by the rise of Salafism and the, in the Sunni world and Christian and Shia are trying to work uh, together because, in fact, they are the, the same enemy. Uh, when we think majority and minority, we have to keep in mind this, this map, uh, this situation of the Sunni and Shia in the Muslim world. The Shia is only 10% of the, the Muslim, very con concentrated around Iran, and all the, the minority in the uh, Middle East are very afraid about the, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this sea of uh, Sunnism. Um, as during the, uh, the Ottoman Empire, minorities are looking to external protection, but it's not anymore France and Great Britain, but now it's more Russia 